Let's talk about shrimp. <laughs> All right, so today I'm going over five myths and five facts over shrimp. Check it out. Hello, YouTube. Patrick with Homebred Aquatics. So, like you, I've watched over the last six years of, of breeding and keeping shrimp like a million videos. Uh, I, I, I seriously have watched a lot uh, because I want my colonies to thrive I want them to breed and I want to sell more shrimp <laughs> however these videos teach very specific things um, things I've done and caused massive losses in some of my um, colonies over time I've trusted and believe there's specific ways of keeping shrimp um, and honestly I just want to show you guys the truth I think I've really narrowed it down over these last few years and lost hundreds of dollars in shrimp and to be able to show people maybe how not to do that you're going to make the mistake when you really get into it it's gonna happen you're not gonna listen to me um, and even maybe if you do listen to me, there's just variables in it. Um, but the fact of the matter is, they're extremely areas to care for. Um, and like I said in the beginning, I'm going to go over five myths and five facts that I've learned when keeping shrimp and breeding them. Alright, let's get started. Number one. The fact that neos have this magical parameter. Although they thrive in very specific environments, the truth is they thrive in several environments. Take a look behind me. So in this tank behind me, you will see a bajillion cherry shrimp. I mean like a ton. Probably more than I have any in any of my other breeding groups. The point being here is that tank behind me that you're looking at, the pH in there is 7.5. The temperature is 82 degrees. The TDS is like probably like 350, 400. Now, take a look over here. So over here we have my shrimp rack. My bottom shrimp rack, all of these are kept without heaters. Very simplistic design, and they are by themselves. Grow a few little plants in here, easy enough, but completely different. In these tanks, pH is 6. TDS is like 150. And the temperature is 70 to 72. So neos don't care about their environment. Rather, it's about consistency. Can I put a rainbow thing in here? Consistency. <laughs> so if you keep them at 70 degrees um, and 6 pH, keep them at that, okay? If that's what you start off with, keep them there. If for whatever reason you wanna do a, grad, a change, I almost already said it. Do a gradual change. Don't just jump to another video and make a huge change because someone said they need to be a specific way. Trust me, you'll kill them. You'll kill them in numbers. I have bounced around videos and people say, oh, well, 7.2 pH is the best. This temperature. They have to have this GH, they have to have this KH. They have to have any of that crap, okay? I have had them in completely different realms and they all thrive. Now I'll get into a little bit of where they thrive more in just a few. Number two, neocaridinias are hardy. You know, you know what's hardy? <laughs> cichlids. 
cichlids are hard. Now I'm talking about your South American and your African cichlids, but cichlids are hard. I literally just replaced a 55 gallon tank like literally just hours ago for a gentleman that had a red devil in a 55 full grown and his tank had busted. He had it in a bucket with a 12 inch Pleco overnight without air and it lived somehow and then I kept it in a bucket overnight again because I was there Sunday. I just sent, went there and replaced it. And you know what? I'm not even really worried about it going through a cycle. Now, I kept all the gravel there. I, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole. My point is, those, those are hardy. Shrimp, on the other hand, if you dump slightly too cold of water into the tank, they all just decide that they want to molt, and then you drop them like flies. It, it, it's very simple things like that. These like major changes you make to the water, a spike in ammonia, um, too high a nitrates, too cold of water, too warm of water all of a sudden, changing the parameters. Does that sound like a hardy thing to you? Now, I'm not saying they aren't hardy to an extent. They are much more tolerant than my rams over here. Love these guys. Uh, However, I'm telling you that the truth is you need to be careful with them and you need to be mindful, specifically on acclimation. Shrimp don't want major changes. Um, that is where you're going to kill them. And that means from the day you bring them home to the moment you put them in your tank, be very mindful. So what do I mean? Uh, drip acclimation, um, and I'll be posting a video very shortly from when I got the guppies, and I'm explaining drip acclimation in there. But my point here is um, acclimate them slowly. Now, that doesn't mean 10 to 20 minutes. I'm talking hours for these guys. I'm talking I, I triple to quadruple the water volume as I drip acclimate them in over a two, three hour period. Because you don't want them to shock. What happens with these shrimp is you shock them and they molt and then they get stuck in their molt if they're not ready for it. And then they die. So again, I'm not saying shrimp aren't hardy, but be careful take a little bit more care for them than the molly or the platy you brought home. Um, I, if, and especially if you're trying to breed them for profit. Please take my myths and take my facts and really hold them to heart. I, myth number three. This is more like 1.5 to be honest. Um, but it follows parameters. However, I want to give it a very specific mention. And mention there's no specific temperature for Neocaridinias. There isn't. I've had them outside. Yeah, outside. Literally had them outside. I, I pushed my limits and they did die at like 50 degrees. But my point here being, I have them behind me at 82, 84 degrees roughly. And in the tanks I showed you in the beginning, all of those, like I said, are 70. These guys are wildly apart in temperature. Now, what I will tell you is the facts about the temperatures. So, at lower temperatures, it equals a slower metabolism. At faster temperatures, it equals a faster metabolism. Now, what does that mean? What that means is production rate. So I do it for cost savings. I don't want to have heaters in a bunch of tanks. Now you could heat the entire room pretty warm to get that um, desired goal. But I keep all of mine um, outside of the one behind me at 70 degrees. 
it extends their life. Now I don't get as many shrimp from it, but I get longer living adults. And when I'm trying to buy very nice adults, it's nice to have them live along. Hence why my lower grade cherry shrimp are behind me in 84 degree water. They spawn like crazy. I guess the words bury, they bury like crazy. Anyway, but you get my point. I have them in here and they are going bananas. I'm probably gonna have to drop like 200 off at the store here soon. Uh, but think of it like a bug. So the bug is the shorter the lifespan. So think of like flies or mosquitoes. They have very short lifespans. Whereas a really slow bug like a beetle has a much more extended life period. Not a huge difference. We're talking weeks, maybe days versus months. But it's a pretty big difference. With our shrimp, it's like a year difference. So colder water gives, gives them another year. Warmer water might subtract a year. So take it how it is. But I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter what temperature they're at. At all. Myth number four. Shrimp need shrimp food. Now I love me some good shrimp food. As a matter of fact, if you want, in my opinion, the best shrimp food out there, for Neos, shrimp can complete. Bring that in just a bit. Anyway, this stuff not only does it smell good, but they tear this crap up. I'll show you in a second. Uh, shrimp don't need shrimp food, okay? They are scavengers at heart. They will eat anything. Flakes, pellets, shrimp sticks, vegetables, other shrimp. The list goes on and on and on. If I throw it in there, these guys are going to eat it. Okay? Um, and another thing. Here. Please. Listen, listen, listen. Don't overfeed your shrimp. Okay? I feed like every three days. That's it. And I'm talking, I have massive colonies sometimes. And I still only feed them like every three days. I had more problems feeding my shrimp every day than I do now doing at every three days. Sometimes every four days. Crap, I might forget and it might be five days. My point is less is better. Now why is less better? Less is better because you get crap when you feed. When there is not a fish predator in there slurping down pests, pests rain control of your tank, whether that's snails, whether that's detritus, whether or not it's scuds, whether or not it's planaria. These things come from overfeeding. The populations of them boom from overfeeding. Now you're bound to get one of the four things I just told you, but my point here is every three days is absolutely fine. Myth number five the number of shrimp you can have in a tank. Listen, there's no magical number to how many shrimp you can have in a tank. There's not. I mean, look at these tanks down here. I have exuberant amounts of shrimp in these tanks. I literally don't think it matters whether or not it's a three gallon, a five gallon, a 10 gallon, a 20 gallon. It doesn't matter as long as you're keeping up with water changes. As long as ammonia or nitrite traits aren't spiking, then you're fine. There's no issue. However, the truth is, you are the limit to how many you can have in a tank. So be honest with yourself. Understand that the amount of shrimp you can have in a tank is limited by you. Your ability to do maintenance, your ability to keep up with things, is what limits the amount of shrimp you can have in a tank. Not the size of it. At all. And I fall victim to this. I've been here before. In those tanks behind us, I've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, and all of a sudden, I have less hundreds. 
and, and it's my fault. I knew because when I checked the nitrates, they were spiked up. And the last time I remembered I did water changes was weeks ago. And I should have known because the populations were crazy big. I should have been doing my water changes. So yeah, get your three gallon. Shove 30 of them in there. But know your, your own limit to how many shrimp you can have in that tank. All right, guys. So I appreciate you listening to my myths and my facts. Maybe some of them aren't quite facts, but more of my heavy-weighted opinion. Let me know in the comments what other myths or facts you've heard of so we can share the wealth of knowledge. And maybe I'll make another video because I'm sure there's more I want to talk about about shrimp. All right, guys. I really appreciate it. Get ready because very soon I will be going over my comprehensive guide on breeding these guys. The best way to breed them for profit. All right.